against Texas Tech, bringing in Cliff Kingsbury. And let me say something about being sound in the kicking game. Wes Walker receives the punt, and oh, there's going to be one missed tackle, and I think we're going to get a block in the Red Raiders. We're going to jump on top with an 85-yard punt return. Didn't we do a whole thing last week about the kicking game, especially special teams play? But they're not watching us, and they're not practicing this in practice. Well, that 20-hour rule, let's blame that. Eric Crouch, though, with his team down 7-0. Throwing it down the middle, John Bowen, 27 yards, and Frank Solich wants to throw the ball effectively. Oklahoma's coming next week. It's 21-13 in the second. Crouch, Wilson, Thomas. Nice work along the sidelines. Crouch, 8 of 17, a buck 51, three touchdowns and one pick in the first half. It was 28-13, but now it's 28-20 late in the first half. Good Kingsbury, good Kingsbury to Carlos Francis, who had a huge game. Nebraska's pass defense riddled. Here comes little Ricky, Ricky Williams. Ricky Williams from 12 yards out. The two-point conversion is good. We're tied at 28 at the half. Third quarter, Nebraska to the run. And Darren Diedrich marks. He just won't go down, just powers his way, picking up first downs. He won't go down here. Here he takes it to the outside. A wonderful cut to get to the edge of circle the defense and lowers his shoulder just short of the first down. Well, they want to throw effectively, especially with Oklahoma coming up, but this is how Crouch gets his business done, adding to his NCAA record for rushing touchdowns by a quarterback. It was 10 of 22. I want to embarrass them. Texas coming in with an 11 game home field winning streak. First drive of the game. The prototype, Chris Sims to the legend. Texas leads the world of nicknames and they lead Colorado 7 0. Story of the game, turnover. First half, Colorado blew it. They were playing this game well. Two fumbles in the first half really hurt them. Marcus Houston put one on the ground and Daniel Graham dropped one as well. 10 points off three Colorado turnovers in the first half. And of course, Texas. We're waiting on big things out of Sims. They're finding big things from their freshman running back, Cedric Benson. An outstanding job up the middle. You talk about nicknames. Well, I'm going to give Cedric Benson one. Little Bevo or Bevo Light. He's going to be able to take the ball straight up the middle, run through, around, and over. Defenders here. It's a shuttle pass. But look, he takes it to the middle, cuts to the outside. He's got the speed to almost go the distance. But once he gets to the sidelines, it is a huge play for the offense getting them out of the hole. He had three catches for 59 yards and well over 100 yards rushing on the day. Actually, right at 100 and a couple of touchdowns. Downs. Chris Sims now with the running game going, passing game gets going too. Sloan Thomas in the end zone, and Texas was rolling. And they did hook him. They did embarrass him. They did do something awesome. Did Mac Brown had a long game with the Chris. Uh, and they did. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. 35 yards of offense in his last couple of games. Mark, defensive line from North Carolina. And the defensive line, they're supposed to contain Woody Dancer on the outside. Don't let him get around the defensive edge and then collapse the pocket on the inside. Stay in your lanes. Don't let him look down the field. Keep away his vision and swarm to the football. What an outstanding game plan by John Bunning to the defense. On the next play, they're going to be so afraid of Julius Peppers, they're going to slide four offensive linemen, three plus a tight end, over to block two defensive linemen. Well, that doesn't work because you're going to see the defensive tackle go up the field, penetrate and beat two blockers on a spin move back. Now here's the linebacker. He's playing spy because the tight end stays in. Woody Dancer cannot run with the football, so he's got to take off laterally. And here come the Carolina Blue jerseys. There's no place for him to go because he's corralled by all those Carolina defensive players. Woody was 10 of 25, throwing it 73 yards in a pick. Ran for only 43 yards. And you mentioned sliding guys to take care of Julius Peppers, but, you know, that doesn't always work. Sometimes he wreaks havoc anyway. He's just too good. Here he penetrates up the field and does a great job of just pushing the offensive tackle through and coming up with the sack. But Julius Peppers isn't done. This young man is phenomenal of getting to the quarterback in athleticism, and now he's got the hops. Watch this play. He penetrates, goes through one defender, goes through another, and tips the ball in the air, comes down with the interception. Let's take another look at this again. This is the old basketball drill. Jump up, bat it in the air. Oh, oh you're giving props to a D lineman, man. You're an old yeah, offensive that, lineman. Tremendous play by Julius Peppers. Dare I say Heisman worthy? I know it's a little late, but oh, why not? You know, Darian Durant, he played with Ronald Curry, quarterback two. Here finds Bosley Allen, Durant, touchdown pass to put the heels up 14-3, and now it's Curry. He found Bosley Allen, too. Bosley, the Angels would be proud. 48 yards, 21-3, Tar Heels on top, third quarter. Durant back in the game. Didn't really matter who was the quarterback. Oh, reaching it into the end zone. It is 28 to 3. And on Clemson's homecoming, look at Durant. He was perfect. 11 of 11. Tar Heels were blowing out the Tigers. Curry was chilling. 38 to 3. The final. John Bunting's team is on fire. I'm not sure if anybody in the ACC wants a piece of them. And not only that, 
as if the news isn't good enough for Carolina. I understand Julius Peppers is he's going to play a little basketball after all for Matt Doherty. Yeah, Woody Dancer wish he would have played some basketball today. Yeah, and Bunting has turned this thing around totally. Maryland trying to stay perfect against Duke. And the fridge has his guy going in. Bruce Perry, number five in the nation in rushing, made it 14-0. It's 21-7. Sean Hill had a huge day. Finds his tight end. Jeff Dugan in the back of the end zone. 28-7. It would be 59-17 Hill in excess of 400 yards of total offense. And now 149-52 in three Pac-10 losses. In the first quarter, though, we are tied at 14. Cody Pickett back in there after missing the UCLA game with a bad shoulder. Finds Patrick Reddick and the Huskies on top, 21-14. Could Arizona stop anyone? Arizona, ball in the 17. John Rattay's in there. Here's Clarence Farmer. Clarence Farmer, a most underrated back in the Pac-10. Could be the best back in Pac-10 outside of the man Foster, UCLA. 28-24 now, and this was a key play. Reggie Williams. Looks like he got a face mask on Michael Jovovet, but no call there. So Pickett, the old rodeo cowboy with that aching shoulder, dancing in there with 13 ticks to go, gets into the house. And Washington, what else? Again, yet another fourth quarter comeback. Pickett looked pretty good. 20 in scoring, but playing their first team foe with a winning record in Air Force. We see it's going pretty well. It's already 28 to 7 in the second quarter. Brandon Dolman to Luke Staley back from the academic issue and weaving through the Falcon defense down to the five and on the next play Staley is going to get it done again. Well they struggled without him last week against New Mexico State. They bring him back this week. You see the sweet cutback. He takes it in breaking three tackles. You get Air Force as he just dogs those guys once again. 35-7 at that point. Gary Croton, boy, he started laying the points and laying the lumber. 63-33, the final. Staley, 134 yards, a couple of touchdowns on the ground. BYU over 600 yards of offense. Toledo also unbeaten coming into the day, but of course it was just four years ago. They went into Ball State House, the house David Letterman built, and had Ball State end that. This is Corey Parchman on the kickoff. You know what happened when he got hit there? They knocked both of his contacts out of his eyes. Couldn't see where he was going. Said, I just saw the yellow goalpost and ran for them. He was a little off because he was going right down the sideline, but it was 24-20 Ball State. Tavares Bolin then picked off by Quentin Manley and Ball State, a thorn in the rocket side, scrubbing their undefeated mission again. I'm not a big fan of that, but I guess it's a big win. So 24-20, Ball State knocks off Toledo. Maybe he should never wear his contacts when he's returning kickoffs. <laughs> yeah, you know, he saw where he was going pretty well. He was able to stay in bounds. SC and Notre Dame, their 73rd meeting. No, it's the 75th anniversary. Carlisle Holiday keeping the ball. He's gone, gone for a 42-yard gain. That was set up a 38-yard field goal, and the Irish up 3-0. Third quarter, Notre Dame down 16-10, second to nine on the SC 35, and Holiday bringing that dimension of us. That playmaker, that's why he's in the lineup. Remember, they had trouble getting big plays from their offense early in the season. With him in, they have some explosion. Notre Dame finding a little offense, going over 200 yards on the ground again. 27-16, they beat SC. SC now with five losses already, and their chances of becoming bowl eligible looking bleak. Notre Dame, meanwhile, back to 500. 208 yards rushing, just 60 for USC. Baylor and Oklahoma. Jason White getting the start. Bob Stoops' team and making the most of it. Finding Curtis Fagan in the end zone and Oklahoma on top of the Bears, seven to nothing. OU trying to push the nation's longest winning streak to 20. But even a team with all of these wins in a row, sometimes they don't cover the kickoff properly. Randy Davis has logged on and he is part of the Gone Network. And poor angles by Oklahoma on this kickoff. Randy Davis does a great job of taking the ball close to the sidelines, down the sidelines to the spear. Ronaldo works now, is gonna do it on the ground, 17 yards out. Sooners with a 24-7 lead and in command as Baylor now in danger of losing his 25th consecutive Big 12 game. Here's works again, his second of the day. It was workmanlike, it was efficient, 33 of 17. White, 32 of 44, 343, but he tied a couple of times in giving Auburn a scare last year. Damon Duvall won the game three straight weeks and he'd need to try again. 41-41 and 
Daniel comes pass, almost a pick six for Jason Alford. That's okay, to will win the game now. Toe meets leather. No, not this time. I was ready to put him on the Heisman list if he had won this one. Not a kicker. The ball can't believe he missed that one. Only 40 yards out, so we go to overtime, tied at 41. Cobb. We had five touchdown passes, a school record. The last one here to DeAndre Green, 48-41 Tigers. Luke McCown, who threw for 381 yards against the Tigers. Under heat, firing right to Dontarius Thomas, who will think of trying to go to the house and figures off why. I'll just step out of bounds because that is the ball game. Auburn, 48-41 in a game that featured nearly 1,100 yards of offense. Nobody can stop anybody in this thing. One thing about Luke McCown, he's not afraid to go against Auburn. Over 800 yards passing the last two years against the Tigers. Third Saturday in October, as mandated somewhere in Leviticus, means Tennessee and Alabama. Vols leading 7-3, following a Casey Claus and a Dante Stallworth touchdown pass, and Travis Stevens ripping through the tight defense. 60 yards to the house, 14-3, Vols in control. But Alabama would fight back. It's 14-10, Tyler Watts. Looking to Sam Collins, they beat Lott in the corner. Collins giving Alabama a 17-14 lead. Tennessee back on top, 21-17. The option, Ahmad Galloway, a Tennessee native, going into the tides on top, 24-21. But not work out well for the tie, particularly in the fourth quarter when they ran just seven offensive plays, guys. And third straight loss the Titans had a lead in the fourth let it get away Tennessee seven in a row against Alabama 35-24 and Tennessee defensively went to pressure defense in the fourth quarter John Henderson putting a lot of pressure on they did not play a prevent defense like they did against Georgia Cats on top big fella Jared Lorenzen spelt at about 275 standing in delivering to Aaron Boone He'll take it in for the 29-yard score. Kentucky hadn't won in Athens since 77, but they were up 16-7. But, of course, there's always a hero against Tennessee. David Green making a big play here. Regroups and hits Fred Gibson down the left sidelines. What a great adjustment to the ball for the 68-yard touchdown score. But wait a minute. David Green's not done. Who should he go to again? Fred Let's Gibson. Fred Gibson, guys. There he is. Between two defenders, comes down with a reception and takes it in for another long score. He had a school record 201 yards receiving on nine catches. Here's Green to, did you see what we did? <laughs> Baron Haynes going into the end zone. He's a hero against Tennessee, 43 to 29. Green over 300 for the third straight time. Gibson, students were chanting, Freddy, Freddy. He says, I don't like Freddy. Call me Fred. Doing that, they'll call him whenever, whenever he wants. Georgia getting ready for the showdown with Florida. And speaking of Snyder's first season when he was taking on a reclamation project, you think Bob Vila wouldn't touch. Taking on Texas AM in Manhattan, and Aaron Lockett drops the punt. AM recovers, led to a field goal. The very next possession, L. Roberson throws behind his man. Brian Gamble picks it off. Set up a touchdown by Joe Weaver. AM was up 24 to 10. And on the next possession, ball on the ground. Jared Penwright would come up with it, and the wrecking crew had wrecked him 31 to 10. But those three turnovers, Lockett would try to atone, returning the punt and getting it back deep into Aggie land. In case they trying to mount a rally, it's 31 24. This a crucial play on fourth down. Yeah, to go to the option, you wonder if maybe they shouldn't have thrown the ball with Mark Dunn, the quarterback. Roberson out because of injury and being ineffective. They don't get it in the end zone. A game effort by Kansas State to fight back into the ball game, but they fall to 1 4. There's like fourth and two and a half, and Scobie Doby didn't. Only got about two. 31 24. AM wins the game. That is their sixth. Off to the Big Ten now, Wisconsin and Illinois. Brooks Bollinger forced to leave the game. Suffering from a groin injury. Illini up 28 14 here. Jim Sorge's in there. Lee Evans is in there. Touchdown 28 21. Wisconsin have been down 25 7 at one point in this game. Kirk Kittner off of Lewis's hands, and Michael Broussard's going to grab it for the Badgers, and suddenly. Wisconsin coming right back. Here comes A.D. Anthony Davis. Following on the counter trade, he follows his blockers to the outside. What a smart running back to follow his offensive line. <laughs> <in the> <laughs> Over 100 <laughs> yards again. <laughs> Always about the offensive line. 28 to 28, but as well as should be, Mark. Protect your quarterback. Jim Sorge to Evans again, and the Badgers are on top. They've had great success on the road. 
not so much at home, but they're on the road here. They're up 35-28 until Kittner goes to Brian Hodges, tied at 35, and then Kittner making plays again. Right? Yeah, and it's all about the DBs. The DBs who get beat by Kittner and Brandon Lloyd. The pump's fake. Don't go for the pump fake. He does. Can't find the ball. Lloyd killed them just all day. 24-45, 401 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. Illinois, 6-1. and one. They take care of Wisconsin, 42-35. to 35. The final for one win to tie Bear Bryant atop Division 1A's all-time coaching wins list. 144 left. Penn State down for Max Seneca. Drilled as he throws incomplete. Napoleon Harris, the big hit. Seneca had to be helped off the field. So redshirt freshman Zach Mills. Mills, get in there. Third and 10. 33 seconds left. Mills, the lefty for Bryant Johnson. And they pick up 14. Nittany Lions on the Northwestern 4. 26 left. Eric McCoo, touchdown. Mills, 5 of 8 on the drive, trying to get Joe Pa off the schneid. Penn State up 38-35. 14 seconds left. Northwestern at the Nittany Lion, 45. Zach Kustak, John Schweiger down the sideline. Clock still moving. they got to call timeout with 7 seconds left. It's all about clock management. Zach Kustak, he's able to complete this, but again, you got to get out of bounds, and time runs out. Penn State, they win! 38-35, Joe Pot now with 323 career coaching wins, tying him with the Bear for the all-time Division 1A lead. Nittany Lions, a season-best 501 yards of offense. Penn State coming from behind five different times. They get Joe Pot, number three. Beating UCLA came in 5-0, Cal 0-5. First quarter, UCLA down three zip. Double reverse. Craig Bragg turns the corner. See you later. 42 yards for the touchdown. Bruins had a 7-3 lead. Second quarter, UCLA up 14-10. First and 10, Corey Poss. This pass deflected, but right to Deshaun Foster. And wouldn't you know it, he's taking it in for the touchdown. UCLA up 21-10. That's just kind of night it was for them. Third quarter, UCLA up 28-10. Cal punting. Taylor Llewellyn blocks it. Devon Reese recovers and, well, he takes it in for the touchdown. UCLA up 35-10 at that point, and this one not a problem. Each of the Bears' six opponents came into the game with Cal unbeaten. Each has left unbeaten. Cal has allowed at least 31 points in every game this season. UCLA has outscored opponents 72-0. South Carolina trying to bounce back from last week's loss to Arkansas, hosting Vandy at williams Bryce. First quarter, Phil Petty, 41 yards, Brian Scott. 7-0 USC. Third quarter, Gamecocks up 19-14. This is Andrew Pinnock, 15 yards. Pinnock, 105 on 13 carries. USC rolls 46-14. A school record 656 yards of offense. Lou Holtz has South Carolina 6-1, only two years after going 0-11 in his... Number 25, Georgia Tech. George Gotze, Deshaun Gregory out of the backfield. And Gregory does the rest, 18 yards for the score. Georgia Tech wins it 27-17. With some instructions for his defense before the game. So go for the ball. Go for the ball. It'll take you to the guy he's throwing to. But go after that ball. Let's see if they follow instructions. Third quarter, Virginia's match job drops back to pass. He's intercepted by Bradley Jennings, who went for the ball. That would lead to a nose touchdown. Still third quarter. Shot of pass tip. And then intercepted by Abdul Howard, who went for the ball. He takes it 80 yards for the score. Bowden in the Knowles roll, 43-7. Florida State started out shaky. Chris Ricks threw two more picks, but the Knowles pulled away with 33 second-half points. You heard about Joe Pa earlier in the show, but Bowden now has 319 wins, and he's tied with Pop Warner for third on the 1A list. He's just four behind Paterno 